So we only have a few minutes left, but I do want to talk about the odds of intelligent life, so the Drake equation. And the Drake equation was just written down by Frank Drake on the board of, uh, on the chalkboard at the first SETI meeting. And what it tries to do is estimate the number of long lasting technological civilizations in the Milky Way. So technological civilizations, as we are considering it would be um, civilizations capable of interstellar communication. Um, some factors in the Drake equation are these, um, I'm gonna go through them one by one. So uh, going back to the previous slide though, notice that the equation says N, that's the number of long lasting technological civilizations and it's equal to the product of all those other factors. So um, the first factor is the rate of star formation in our galaxy. So we can actually estimate this because we can count how many stars are in the Milky Way now. We know the overall age of the galaxy. So we estimate that the rate of star formation is about 10 stars per year. Um, the fraction of stars that have planets is the next factor. And we optimistically set this to one because we have found protoplanetary disks around essentially every star forming region that we've um, inspected. So it seems like planet formation is very common and a natural process of star formation. So once we know how many stars there are, how many of those have planets, we need to know how many of those planets are in the habitable zone. And as you've seen, the Kepler mission is on the case. And that suggests that, you know, the galaxy might have up to 40 billion Earth-like planets in the habitable zone. Um, so as a optimistic estimate, we're gonna say that this factor is about a 10th. So out of all the planets, um, fractions of stars with planets, the number of planets in each solar system that are in the habitable zone will put it one tenth. So after we have a habitable planet, we need to know, does life develop there? And one is an optimistic value. Um, we right now only have n equals one database to support this claim, right? Um, but finding life elsewhere in the solar system would boost our confidence. But we think that life is fairly likely because looking at when it developed on Earth, it seems like it developed as soon as it possibly could after the heavy bombardment period in our early solar system ended. So after we have life, we need it to become intelligent before it can become technological. Then we need it to develop interstellar communication. And then finally, that civilization needs to not destroy itself uh, before it can communicate with us. So that's these last um, three factors here. We're gonna say that both of these fractions, the number that de develop intelligence and then go on to develop communication are equal to one um, because we're just gonna continue with our optimism. And as far as the lifetime of civilizations, uh, we really have no idea. At least us, we've only been capable of technological, um, you know, being a technological society that can do interstellar communication for about a hundred years. So, at least 100, but I guess we don't know how long we're going to have a run of it here. Um, so on that optimistic note, if we put all of these optimistic factors together, multiply all of those together, then the 10 here cancels with the 1 10th. Everything else is 1. So it turns out then that the number of civilizations we could communicate with is equal to the lifetime of civilization in years because remember a star formation rate was in one over years, our lifetime is in years, so those factors cancel out. And so the lifetime of a civilization gives us the number in the galaxy. So if we assume that um, a technological civilization like ours will only last for a thousand years, 10,000 years, then that gives us how many we should expect to find in the galaxy. Then based on how big the galaxy is, you can figure out how close together they would be. And from there, you can start to plan on where you might want to look for signals and where you might want to point any communications should we choose to send any. So that's everything in the Drake equation. Um, there is a, this question of if there are aliens, you know, where are they, right? If, there, if it's so likely for life to evolve and there's so many habitable planets to choose from, why haven't we heard from anything? And I think it kind of comes down to possibly that space is big and we might not be looking in the right places 
or simply we, there hasn't been time for us to receive those communications given that we've only just recently developed the capacity to even listen. All right, in the modern day, now that we have exoplanet research that's very active, um, people have recast the Drake equation to asking what is the number of advanced civilizations that could have ever developed anywhere in the observable universe. And uh, so you can read this paper of theirs in 2016 if you're curious to that. Um, and basically they find it relatively optimistic that there could be lots of advanced civilizations that could have developed, but space is big, time is long, so we haven't heard from them still. So even though there's lots of optimism about the possibility for intelligent life, we are still the only intelligent species that we know of. And so I think to sort of wrap up all the ideas that we've covered over the course of the term, um, I think it behooves us to remember that we're just a very small part of this universe. Um, this is the planet Earth um, as seen, I think, from one of the voyagers. Um, and as Carl Sagan described it, that little dot is our home. That's where we all live out our lives. That's where every part of human history has gone down. It's a mode of dust suspended in a sunbeam. And um, we're just a part of the universe, but we're a part that's thinking about and exploring it. And I think that's awesome.